And the president takes his feud with a Democratic congresswoman who's been critical of Israel to a stunning new level. He says any Jewish voters who vote Democratic show either, quote, a total lack of knowledge or great disloyalty. I'll get reaction from Democratic Congressman Ted Deutsch. He is on the Foreign Affairs and the Judiciary Committees. First, to CNN Chief White House Correspondent Jim Acosta. And, and Jim, the president took these questions in the Oval Office about the economy, but, but a whole lot more as well. Oh, that's right, Brianna. As you said, the president sounded open to the idea of a payroll tax cut uh, while talking with reporters earlier today uh, in the Oval Office. The president said that would not be necessary because of any kind of looming recession. Then the president once again went after Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib of Minnesota. And during the course of those remarks, the president said if Jewish people in the United States vote for Democrats, they are showing, quote, disloyalty. President Trump is ripping into forecasts from economists that the U.S. could be headed toward a recession. I think the word recession is a word that's inappropriate because it's just a word that the, uh, the certain people, I'm going to be kind, certain people in the media are trying to build up because they'd love to see a recession. Still, the president revealed he's considering some proposals to boost the U.S. economy including a payroll tax cut. Payroll tax is something that we think about, and a lot of people would like to see that, and that very much affects the working, the workers of, of our country, and we have a lot of workers. I've been thinking about payroll taxes for a long time. Whether or not we do it now or not is, uh, uh, it's not being done because of recession. But the president contradicted his own aides, who had just batted down the idea a few hours earlier in the day. Payroll tax cut being considered? Uh, it's not being considered at this time. Mr. Trump is still touting the U.S. economy as the best in the world, but there are signs of possible trouble. U.S. Steel announced up to 200 temporary layoffs in the critical battleground state of Michigan. That news came less than a week after the president said the steel industry was humming along. We're doing steel. Steel industry is hot. The steel, they were dumping steel all over. They were destroying our companies. U.S. Steel now, all of them, they're all expanding. The steel industry is back. It's doing great. On gun control, the president also seemed to downplay the need for tighter background checks. Sources tell CNN the president has soured on the idea of new gun laws after talking with lawmakers in the NRA. A lot of the people that put me where I am are strong believers in the Second Amendment, and I am also. And we have to be very careful about that. You know, they call it the slippery slope. And all of a sudden, everything gets taken away. We're not going to let that happen. But listen to what the president said earlier this month when he claimed he didn't agree with the notion of a slippery slope, an NRA talking point. The NRA has, over the years, taken a very, very tough stance on everything. And I understand it. You know, it's a slippery slope. They think you approve one thing, and that leads to a lot of bad things. I don't agree with that. The president also attacked Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, who gave a tearful rebuke of Israel's decision to ban the Michigan Democrat, along with Minnesota Representative Ilhan Omar, tweeting, I don't buy Tlaib's tears. I have watched her violence, craziness, and most importantly, words for far too long. Now tears? She hates Israel and all Jewish people. She is an anti-Semite. All of a sudden, she starts with tears, tears. And I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't buy it for a second. Then the president expanded on his rant, making a remark immediately condemned by some Jewish American groups as offensive. I think any Jewish people that vote for a Democrat, uh, I think it shows either a total lack of knowledge or great disloyalty. And just days away from the next G7 summit, the president resurrected his own talk of allowing Russia back in after the group of world powers gave Moscow the boot over its annexation of Crimea talking about Russia because I've gone to numerous G7 meetings and uh, I guess President Obama because uh, Putin outsmarted him President Obama thought it wasn't a good thing to have Russia in so he wanted Russia out but I think it's much more appropriate to have Russia in it and getting back to the president's comments about uh, Michigan Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, a number of Jewish American groups have already weighed in condemning the president's remarks. Uh, Jonathan Greenblatt, the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, has put out this tweet. We can show it, put it up on screen for you. Uh, it says it's unclear who POTUS is claiming Jews would be disloyal to, but charges of disloyalty have long been used to attack Jews. As we've said before, it's possible to engage in the democratic process 
without these claims. It's long overdue to stop using Jews as a political football. So, uh, Brianna, a steady stream of condemnations of the president's remarks in the Oval Office coming in this evening uh, after what he had to say about the congresswoman. I want to begin with something the president said. I mean, this was just incendiary, what he said in the Oval Office today. He said, quote, I think any Jewish people that vote for a Democrat, I think it shows either a total lack of knowledge or great disloyalty, end quote. What's your reaction? Um, it's outrageous. It's offensive. Uh, and it's dangerous. I don't know who the president is talking about. Are, is he suggesting we're being disloyal to him? Is he suggesting that he knows what it means to be loyal to my religion? The president needs to stop dividing people. He needs to stop doing this, using this kind of rhetoric. I don't, I, Brianna, I went to the House floor in March and I tried to explain to my colleagues what it means, what it has meant throughout the history of the Jewish people when charges of dual loyalty are leveled against Jews. Now, to find myself having to explain to the President of the United States what it means when someone suggests that the Jews are being disloyal and what that has meant to the Jewish community throughout history, it, sows, it's, it's, it creates an environment that puts Jews at risk. The President should know that. It is outrageous. I condemn it. And frankly, everyone who, who cares about our democracy ought to condemn the president's words today as well. How do you square that? I mean, you have been critical of your colleagues. You have been critical of Democratic Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. You've been critical when your colleagues have trafficked, they've said inadvertently and apologized for it in anti-Semitic tropes. That, that's on one side. And now you have the president saying this as he's also trying to make, for instance, Rashida to lead the face of the Democratic Party. Well, you're you're right. I I've been very clear, and I think it's imperative that uh, that we all be clear that anti-Semitism should be condemned wherever it comes from, and the kind of language that contributes to anti-Semitism should be condemned wherever it comes from. That's why I, I spoke out against language. Uh, that plays into classic anti-Semitic tropes, lies about the Jewish community. I did that on the House floor about one of my colleagues. And that's why I would expect Democrats and Republicans alike would condemn the President of the United States for using language that throughout history has led to very bad outcomes for Jewish communities around the world. The charge that somehow Jews are being disloyal to their government, that they're not really good Jews. Brianna, I had a meeting with a group of veterans just yesterday, and many of them are Jews, and many of them voted for me. The fact is that just like my father who served our country, just like these, these brave veterans that I was with yesterday, uh, when they vote for Democrats because that's who they believe in, that's what they want, that's how they choose to exercise their right to vote, uh, when that's what they do and the president calls them out and suggests that they're disloyal Americans, how dare he? Is he being anti-Semitic saying what he said? Well, what the president is doing is, is creating an environment in which anti-Semitism can flourish. When you start to use language like that, when you suggest that, that Jews are being disloyal to America or to him or whatever it is he meant, there's no, there's no valid reason to say that. Uh, but when you start using language like that, then the white nationalists hear it and it sends them a signal that it's okay for them to use language, that Jews are disloyal. That's what he does. That's, and, and to do that, when we're not that far removed from the deadliest attack on the Jewish community in American history, which happened in Pittsburgh, when a, a shooter went in and he went, it was a white nationalist shooter who went to that synagogue the week after they had uh, a Sabbath service uh, that, that was focused on immigrants and refugees. That's why he chose to attack Jews. And then you, you look at, at, at language that plays right into the hands of white nationalists. Um, uh, we, should, 
Well, I've said it before, and, and I'm sorry to be so emotional about this, Brianna, but it, it needs to be condemned. The president needs to apologize to the Jewish community. He needs to apologize to everyone who is committed to a vibrant democracy with differences of opinion. Just because more than three quarters of the Jewish community chose not to vote for President Trump is not reason for him to use the kind of language that winds up fueling the anger of white nationalists.